So we're walking out of Damascus, heading on. We picked up Joe and Edith. His Liberty. So we're back in the woods. Left Damascus. Took a couple of day. Took a couple of days. You never realize how hard it is to hold a camera out until you have to do it for like a couple of minutes after you've been walking all day. I got rid of my beard. Nice and fresh and so clean, clean. So um, we're heading up to Gr Marion and um, Edith and Joe with us. <laughs> and I'm videoing the other way, buddy. <laughs> um, but Edith is uh, new to the trails, so we're working with her. And we've got the, the patience of uh, a saint at this point. We'll see how long that lasts. And uh, we're trying to get her uh, trail orientated. So this is what we got going on. Right now we're working on the follow command. And as you can see, Edith desperately wants to be in front. But it just follow. takes time, little by little. And luckily, luckily, pro tip, um, it's easy to do it when you're on a narrow trail. So that way they can't squeak by you. You know, if you're doing it on a road where it's wide open, nope. you know, they can just run around you. Nope. So, follow. you know. If you're trying to work on the follow, keeping the, the pack behind you, just uh, get a tight, narrow trail where they can't really get by, or a ledge, and um, have at it. So as always with dog training, patience is the number one key. Patience for yourself, and patience for your puppy. Oh, almost, almost. So this is how Liberty and I safely cross the road. Liberty, sit, stay. Good girl, you stay. You look left, you look right. You get to the other side. Appalachian Trail's right there. Liberty, cross. Cross. Good girl. Safety first. Slow and steady. Get a view. How we doing? I guess. My buddy Joe and his wife, they uh, had some uh, backyard trail tail hats made for me. Red, white, and blue. Trucker, you know, material, stuff like that. So I'm appreciative. It's so white though, like I feel bad wearing it. But I guess, uh, you know, they're like me, that I buy things to use them, not to sit them on the shelf to look at them. So we're gonna use it and then breaks or gets dirty we'll wash it until it can't be used anymore and then we'll uh, get another one so, um, um, we're heading up towards Mount Rogers I'm not sure I don't think we're gonna make it there today I like doing the big climbs in the beginning of the day not at the end uh, Edith is doing well she is uh, definitely excited she is a puppy, so she's got a puppy mentality. I call her, I call all dogs puppies, you know, but 18 months old and this is new for her. So it's exciting. She did really well in camp last night. I wasn't running around, knocking down people's tents or anything like that. She was roughhousing with Liberty, which was to be expected. And um, there's another dog in there, Murph. He's a Labradoodle, I think. He's like a fluffy Labradoodle. Oh, cool dude though. I like him. So. 
Where's my puppy? Go ahead, Liberty. Where's Edith? Go find her. Where is she? Perfect place to take a little 10 minute break. Put the puppers, do that thing. Yep. No, they're not related. Making our way down the Virginia Creeper Trail. Liberty. Going this way. Come on, pup. Come on. The AT and the Virginia Creeper Trail have merged. So I definitely want to get back here and cycle this thing. I think it's something like 30 or 40 miles. Nice little trail. Maybe do a little bike touring. On my list. Heading up, Buzzard Rock. All the trees, flowers are blooming, trails popping. How's your day going? So I just dropped my pack on the side of the trail because uh, somehow the bite valve on my hose ripped off. And uh, I mean, I can still use it, but the problem is is that I can't uh, give uh, Liberty water when I need to. So I mean, it wasn't too far back. We just uh, filled up our water a bunch. Luckily, I noticed it before. And here comes Edith. She's probably going to get yelled at. Sorry about that. Edith is still learning her trail manners. That's okay. She's just a big old puppy. So, I'm going to go back. We're going to retrace our steps. Hopefully, we find that bite valve. Um, if not, then that's what to make do. It's just that uh, I owe it to Liberty to be able to give her water when I need to. And um, the plastic piece is fine. I can lock it, but I can't like, uh, build up pressure to give her the water without wasting it. So uh, It's pretty big. It's like a clear plastic with a red dot in the middle. It's an Osprey bite valve. It's one of the older ones. I think the newer ones have like these twist tops on them and... and uh, valve covers and stuff and I don't need all that nonsense so maybe it's just a different version of it that they sell so head back see if we can find it and if we can't we'll get another chance on our way back to my pack to find it again so it's always a plus side to everything all right a little bit of shade heck yeah It was up that way. So we're just hitting Mount Rogers National Recreational Area, walking through the meadows. This is what we're dealing with. Yeah. There's Joe and Edith. Liberty. So. Hit our first meadow on our way to the top. 
Hey puppy. Edith is a rock star. She's doing great. Liberty's making friends. Leaving them some messages. First pony. Right in front of Joe. Right off the trail. Edith, Edith, words. Edith hasn't figured it out yet. There he is. Yeah, just up here eating grass. I don't. I think she may be pregnant. She looks pretty big. Especially coming out of a winter. Who knows? You know how I feel about my check marks. And my checkpoints, what do we got? We got Liberty standing by the 500 mile mark. Hoo -hoo. Liberty, good job. Good job, pause puppy. Pause, that's licks. Pause, high five. Come on, come on, you can get it. Okay, good job. Another checkpoint, I feel like today's all checkpoints. We've got the uh, fat man squeeze. So I'm gonna hand the camera over to Joe. That way if it gets stuck, there's a... Uh, there's evidence of the location of my death. Oh, that's it? Okay, deliver guys. Keep going. Oh, geez. Squeeze, fat boy. <laughs> you need a new pack. Heck yes. Oh, back up. Batman squeeze. Keep going, guys. Keep going. Okay. Going over. Clouds are out, puppies are happy, Joe's half dead. But I'm still here! <laughs> Just jump! There they go. Hi, right, my turn. Here we go. Ooh. Off the rocky start! Oh, come on. Well, that was anticlimactic, huh? Yeah. yeah. The views, though. Some ponies down there in the fields. Some hikers heading south. Hold a second. Apparently, if you zoom in, those horses have horns. Who would have thunk? What do you call a horse with horns? A cow. Oh, a cow. Who oh, no. knew? Well, so I was mistaken. That was not Fat Man Squeeze. That was just a test. That's Fat Man Squeeze. I'm gonna hand the phone over right. to Joe while I squeeze. I am videoing you, videoing me coming through. Hold on. Okay, we gotta stop for a sec. Definitely think the other one was tougher. And they say the AT isn't technical. Be careful coming out. Edith, come. Come. Oh. Oh. Okay, Liberty. Keep going. No, no. Keep going. That's what we just came down. Pretty cool. Pro tip, your poop shovel doubles up so I can get my water. Not bad. This is what the water source looks like. I was able to get that because I'm smart. 
horse is taking a dust bath. Shake it off, buddy. There you go. So I've been talking about this for the last 504 miles. Yes, that is not a water slide. That would hurt, but that's a good place to jump in and refresh. These two, as soon as the sun comes up. Guys, we have a lot of miles to do today. So vicious. Vicious chocolate puppies. Hey. We camped uh, in this area last night. A ton of ponies came down to say hi to us and graze. Uh, I rained a little bit. So if I don't think it's going to rain, I typically don't hang my shelter and uh, put it up. So 1.15 this morning, I was uh, putting up my shelter, which is okay. It only takes me like five minutes. So um, I just enjoy hanging in the hammock without the bug net, being able to see the sky. So uh, we're heading uh, north. We're heading towards Marion still. We got about 30 miles to get there. There's a couple of gaps in between. We're trying to be in Marion by Saturday so we can do a, a post office pickup to get dog food. So um, there's a few spots along the way that we could get out if we needed to so we don't have to wait till Monday uh, to pick up food because obviously the post office isn't open on Sunday. Um, other than that, it's supposed to rain today so that's always exciting. And uh, this is what the trail has been looking like. It's all all these giant rocks where you can't take a normal step without twisting an ankle so the slow miles but easier miles than what we've seen this is where we're going we're heading down there i don't know if you can see it those are the scales scales um, i guess they used to do cattle runs down here and then what they would do is they would come up uh, to this area to the grayson highlands area and the cattle would graze and um to gain weight before they hit the scales and were sold or auctioned. Um, that way they weren't as skinny. I guess the, the run up here was intense, so a lot of the cattle would lose lose weight, which I can understand because I'm losing weight just walking down to the scales. So, um, I thought that was pretty cool, you know. I know some people out west or down south or whatever, they still do that kind of thing you know, with the cattle, but I've never never had that and never been a part of that lifestyle so so it's fascinating to me when I do see it or read about it and stuff like that you know look mommy when I grow up I want to be a cowboy <laughs> all right enough of that nonsense. this isn't a Zen rock garden that's for sure yep there they go these two clowns you know, it's five in the morning. What are you girls doing? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. What's wrong? What's wrong? No, they're just playing. <laughs>